Hey, welcome to the Guy Hut. Halfway through our Wapta Traverse. Had two nights in the hut so far, one more to go. Been a great trip so far. And uh, just about to start a little mini day tour. The trip started with a long drive up to Lake Louise, which was still in the full grip of winter when we arrived. And we, our team of me, Dean, Dave and Brian, started on our first day with a crossing of Pato Lake, one of the access points to the main Wapta ice field. And I have to say it was quite a shock to the system carrying such a heavy bag again. The weather was pretty grey and snowy, the bag felt super heavy and honestly I think all of us got a bit of a stark reminder that big trips in the mountains aren't all beautiful views and high fives on summits, they're also about little discomforts, sores on your hips and aching shoulders. All that said, it was still super exciting to be climbing up into the mountains with a week of adventure ahead and we set up our first campsite in good spirits and uh, enjoyed a bit of rest. The next morning dawned clear and we had a fabulous journey up onto the Wapta Icefield proper and then across and up another glacier to access the Guy Hut. The scenery throughout the day was just mind-blowing and although the clouds came and went, we got enough clearings to see just how wild a place we were in. The scale of everything around us was incredible and in the end we were moving for seven hours on day one and over eight on day two so getting a few fun turns and then pulling into the Guy Hut which we'd reserved ha uh, beforehand uh, felt pretty good. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> we had three nights booked at the hut so we made the most of it by doing some short day tours and enjoying the sensation of carrying light bags. Um, like the two days we'd spent accessing the hut, the two full days we had at the hut were a mix of sunshine and snow but the weather was still good enough for us to get out and have some fun on the mountains surrounding us. Here we are, summit of uh, Yoho Peak. Woo! Woohoo! It's going to be some shaky camera work, but I've got to capture this view. Wow! So our hut's somewhere down there, and then we can swing around all the way to Mount Gordon and the Wapta Ice Field. Wow! As well as enjoying the skiing and the feeling of remoteness, being in the hut also enabled us to make some minor gear repairs, eat our way through some of the food we carried and catch up on sleep. It also meant that we got an utterly spectacular sunset over the President's Peaks just to the south on our last night too. After three days of relative comfort, it was time to move on again and we retraced our steps back to the main Wapter ice field in perfect conditions under a blue sky and via some amazing skiing. Hey Charlie, All right Charlie go! That fifth day was wonderful and it led to a five-star campsite too, just to add to the good news. What do we make of the campground? Ooh. Thanks for the kitchen, yeah. Brian. It goes, boys. <laughs> it goes. Brian's dug us a pretty sweet kitchen. Yeah. We did all right. 
Yeah. Great day. Great campsite. Let's have a quick look in the tent. The Taj Waptal, yeah. yeah. It's going to be a pretty comfy night in there, I think. At this stage, we'd planned on skiing for two more days, but conditions were good and there was a storm forecast to arrive. So we decided to make a run for it and link our proposed final two days into one. It made for a long day, but when you're up somewhere high and wild, the sun's shining and you're making good progress, it feels great, regardless of the physical effort. The final climb and then a long skate across Sherbrooke Lake felt tough and sweaty, but getting back to the truck where beer was waiting for us made it all worthwhile. What a trip.